Welcome YouTubers to my channel. Well, it looks like it has begun. We are going to be in the process of dropping a transmission on this 2002 Nissan Xterra 3.3 in order to replace a rear main seal that has a pretty bad leak. And as you can see right here, I did attempt to go underneath of it and try to trace down the leak. And at this point, it does look like the leak is coming out of the rear main seal. And as you can see, it's pretty bad here. And also one other quick thing, you see this bolt right here? Well, I did have a problem, oil coming around it. Now, I did fix the valve pan cover, replace the gasket, and over time, the oil did stop. So, it looks like the oil that was on this bolt just took a little while to burn off. So, we are good to go there. Now, in order to go ahead and prep this, we do have to take some measurements of the front end. On this Nissan, it does have torsion bars. The torsion bars keep the front end up a little high. You can actually adjust those torsion bars to bring the front end up or down. And as you can see right here, we have quite a bit of clearance and this will allow us to put bigger tires on this vehicle a little bit later. So one of the first things we want to do first is go ahead and take a couple of measurements. So find this nice level place to park your Xterra. Get a tape measure and measure from the wheel up to the top here and right about to the center of this trim. Take a measurement. On this side it is 33 inches. Write that down. And now we'll do the same thing on the passenger side. We'll simply measure up from the center of the wheel. Looks like it's going to be about 33 inches. Okay, so we're done with that. And now let's write these numbers down. 33 inches for the driver's side and 33 inches for the passenger side. That way we won't forget this. We can use this later when we go adjust those torsion bars. And we're putting it back together and making it level again. Now for me, I'll be doing my own transmission in my own backyard. Now as you see in my setup, the ground is fairly level. And I have the front of the SUV up on a set of ramps. And my e-brake has been set. And both of my rear wheels are blocked for safety. Please, this is very important. And as you can see on the passenger side, this wheel is also blocked. Very important to do this. Your safety is always first. Now for this transmission job, we'll be using a standard transmission jack that I've picked up for less than $200. This thing's about eight years old, and it has been a lifesaver. Now I have done a little modification to it. As you notice here, there's a piece of wood. I made this little platform because the plate that sets here, uh, when you buy these, they give you a couple chains and some hooks. I find it's better to put the transmission on something like this it gives a little more stability and makes the job a little safer and that way the transmission won't slide off of the plate when you buy one of these floor jacks these are the accessories that you typically get you get the four corner brackets and you get a chain to kind of help that transmission stay stable on that small steel platform that they give you this is why i built a big platform when you put that transmission down on it or you're lifting it up or lifting it down it gives that transmission stability where you can actually work with and one other thing you might want to do if you haven't used your transmission jack in quite some time go ahead and check the oil level make sure that it's okay there's nothing like getting the jack halfway up it won't go any higher because it's out of fluid and of course on this particular transmission jack you can see the plug right here when the transmission jack is all the way in the lower position you feel this up until the fluid comes to the top then you put the plug back in and you're good to go okay at this point we have two things we have to consider how far will this platform go up and we're jacking this up and the second being how high the vehicle will be setting when you're doing this job okay so the first thing we're going to do we're going to jack this up all the way as far as it'll go upwards And as you can see here, we're up pretty high in the air, so this thing will go up to about 25, 26 inches. So we'll take those measurements now. And now we want to take a measurement from the ground upwards. And you can see here, we're about 20 inches or so. So this should work fairly well. If we need a couple pieces of wood to make a shim to bring the transmission jack up a little higher, we can certainly do that. So that there is a pretty important thing to think about before you start this job. Now on the bottom here, we do have a torsion bar that we have to get ready to remove. You can see the back of it here. It goes to the back part of the frame and going to the front of the lower control arm. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here is go ahead and put some penetrating oil on this long bolt that you see here. This is the torsion bar adjusting bolt. There is a jam nut on top here. And the idea here is to let this get really soaked with grease and so forth so we can break this top 
nut here off this is the jam nut and once we get this up about a half inch or so then we can continue to go ahead and try to break this bolt loose now if you live in the northeast i really highly recommend that you do this let this soak for a day or so and also you can just use some regular grease some heavy grease like this put this on here this way this grease will stay on here a lot longer it will not evaporate as fast as penetrating oil and this will help you really to break these bolts and get that jam nut off there. And we'll do the same thing to the passenger side. Spray that baby down and let her soak. And now this is a good time to go ahead and disconnect the battery. And here is the front of the torsion bar. We'll go ahead and take a wire brush here. We're going to clean this up a little bit. And now we'll take a paint marker and we'll go ahead and put a mark right about there. So when we go to put this back together, we'll know where the mark is. And on the back, we'll go ahead and break loose this jam nut. It is a 19 millimeter wrench. And you see the, see just how easy it is when you put grease on these. Okay, so about after 20 minutes, you can see where I'm at, and I'm using one of these ratchets, and this is a lifesaver. And I did take a small wire brush, and if you clean the rust off on top of this, it does make it easier. It's almost tempting to take the four bolts out of the exhaust and push it completely out of the way because you have a pipe right here that's in the way. But the way I'm laying, it looks like it's going to come out fairly easy. But if you live in the Northeast, you have a lot of rust in your bolt. I almost recommend that you take off part of your exhaust here. Just slide it back out of the way to make your job a little easier. As you can see there, we're just about off. We've got about a half inch to go. Okay, so this is just about out. And I kid you not, you'll be spending some time on these two bolts. So there is the nuts off of that. So we know the rest of this here is nice and clean, so this will come loose eventually, pretty easily. All right, now we're going to take a 19 millimeter socket, and we're going to go ahead and see if we can break this long bolt loose. It goes through the adjuster here, and we've got a wrench on top holding that nut up there. So one, two, three, and there we go. All right, so broke loose pretty easy. Sweet. So what we're going to do to speed up the video, we're going to go ahead and use my electric impact wrench here. Pretty much off. There we go. Pull that down like that. Pull the stuff off the top here. Grab that real quick. There's a piece up here. Grab that. Put that back on her like this, along with the nut, and you won't lose any of this stuff. And you can see our torsion bar is all the way down. And one other quick thing here, notice how the front end has come down. This will actually help us out later in order to get our hands up around that transmission and take out some bolts. So we've actually loaded the vehicle a little bit lower, and that'll be an advantage for our jack. Okay, do the same thing to the passenger side. Put a paint mark on the front of the torsion bar. Now in the back, we do have a bracket here that's kind of in our way of our nut on our adjuster. So we'll go ahead and hit this bracket out of the way, and there's actually a cable above it up here. This will just give us a lot more clearance. We'll get this out of the way. All right, so out comes one. These are little 10 millimeters. And we'll get our last bolt out of the way, and we'll pull the bracket out of the way for now. All right, so we'll start working on this jam nut. We'll see if we can get it broke loose with all that grease. Uh, all right, so there we go. Looks like it's breaking loose, and now we'll go ahead and use our ratchet wrench and take it off.
All right, guys, as you can see, just about all. One long take, it took about 15 minutes. And that grease really helps. All right, I think she's off. And like I said, this ratchet is a lifesaver. And there it is. So it wasn't too bad. So at least we know the threads on this is nice and clean and we should have no problem getting this bolt off. And now we'll go ahead and remove this bolt from the torsion bar adjuster. And just like that, it's out. Now, I'm not going to lie, this impact gun has been a lifesaver. See how long this bolt is? Very long bolt. So you have to either use some muscle or use a uh, impact tool. And here is our result. Put everything back together. That way you won't lose it. And after going through all that, you can see how much lower this side is sitting now on the passenger side. All right, on the front of the torsion bar, go ahead and take out these bolts here. These are 14, and you can put a wrench on the back side to hold that. And this one here is a 19. Take all three of these off. And on the back of the torsion bar, take a hammer and tap this a few times. Go ahead and make sure you put uh, the passenger driver side so you know where you're at. Make sure your mark there is indexed. And there that is out. Like that. And we'll go back up the front and we'll put a screwdriver behind it and kind of wiggle it and pry it off just like that. All right, so we're back on the uh, driver's side. We'll pull this boot back. We'll put some paint here and put a D here so we'll know which side's which. And now go ahead and take a big hammer and hit this a couple times to break this loose a little bit. And if you look kind of close, if I shake this a little bit, you can kind of see that move in there. That's the whole idea of hitting it with a hammer so we can slide this off here eventually. All right, so we're on our last bolt here. Take that off. And finally, uh, as we pull our boot back, what gets a lot of guys is this piece right here. They can't get it off. If you hit it with a hammer several big times, just keep hitting it. It'll eventually start to work its way loose. And when it's just about, uh, kind of loose, take a slight hammer, smaller hammer, and just hit the back of it like this. This will come out. This gives the guys a lot of problems, and I know it's tough, and you gotta turn it sideways like this, and this whole piece will come out. Just make sure you put some paint so you know which is uh, where the marks actually go. And now we'll go ahead and slide the entire torsion bar out, like that. And that's how you get your torsion bars out. All right, so we're taking out our last bolt on our cross member here that where the torsion boards uh, kind of bolt to. And I'll tell you what, Nissan does not mess around when they put bolts in these cross members. They are in there tight. There's four of them. And here's the last one. On the back of it, I'm using a wrench to hold it. It's 11 16 And the socket I'm using is a 17 millimeter. And these are fairly long bolts. There's four of them. And you can see these are designed not to break. All right, so we'll go ahead and drop this cross member. It's not an appropriate term, but it's a cross member bar that's under here. So we'll go ahead and start prying this down. Now I'll take off the front drive shaft. And make sure you put some paint marks on the front drive shaft so you know where it goes. And uh, these here are all 14 millimeter. These are some of the toughest bolts I've ever broken loose on a vehicle, especially these uh, drive shafts. I've actually had to take a secondary wrench and hold the back of this. It, sometimes it'll break loose and sometimes I, sometimes I won't. I do have oil in here. So we have four of these. We're going to take two off on the bottom on the front 
and take two off on the top after we spin this drive shaft around. All right, so we got uh, two on the bottom here out. Now let's go to the rear. And now we'll start working on these. We'll get these out. Got to have patience with these. And there's our first one. And unlike the front one, uh, the bolt and everything came out. That would be nice if they all did that, but uh, this one came out. So put them together like this and put them in a pan or whatever so you don't lose them. And here comes our second one. And we'll put this together. And you see my paint mark here. And to make my life just a little bit easier, in order to spin that drive shaft, I've simply just put a jack up under the uh, lower control arm and spin the wheel a little bit. And as you see, as I spin the wheel, it will turn that drive shaft now. And you put this uh, drive shaft in neutral on the gear selector. Sometimes it will disengage and you can just simply turn it with your hand. But sometimes, on rare occasions, you have to go ahead and jack the front wheel up and help this drive shaft to turn. All right, so that's done. Now we can put the wheel down. And as you can see, sometimes heat is your best friend. So I'm going to heat these two up because they are a bear. And I do have a bar here. Or I should say an extension going through the center of this to kind of give me some more support. All right. Unbelievable. I cannot believe how tight these things are. I actually had to put a set of ice grips on that to keep that from turning. Heated it, still couldn't get it, so I had to switch around. Get on this side and put all the muscle I could on this. Put a 14 on there. It would be better if you had a six point. And right here, I just kind of put this on here. Give me some more leverage with this here. And uh, this is how I actually got this loose. If I hadn't done this, I probably would have never gotten it loose. So that one's loose. And now we got to do the other one. So let's go ahead and take these vice grips off and get the other one off. Just so you know, spend some time on these. It's These are going to be very difficult to get off. All right, folks, after about 20 minutes, I likely never got this bolt. I was almost going to give up. I heated it, did everything I could. And uh, all I could get was this whole thing to turn. But the problem is on the back here, you can't get a socket. Or if you even get a wrench on here, it wants to slip off. So I actually took a screwdriver, put it up in there and tapped it in there, and actually broke this loose. I almost was ready to cut her off. So just be aware on these drive shafts, especially on this Xterra. You're going to have to fight to the last bolt to get it off but the good news is if you round one off you can get a cutting tool in here and just cut this off and take the whole thing off well comes our last nut thank goodness and you notice i do have a, a bar right here that actually helps to make this uh, drive shaft stable and also if you take all your bolts out in the back and you get into a situation like i got and this starts to move around just put a couple bolts back in here to kind of stable this up a little bit so it can help it from uh, not being flexed around so much and that way you can get the offending bolt up here out so now we'll go ahead and pull this out and i'll go ahead and take a hammer and kind of hit this a couple times get the rest of these out that one and one on the top once we get it out, then we can go ahead and pull this drive shaft out. And finally, we'll go ahead and pull our drive shaft out. And of course, our front drive shaft bolts are bagged and tagged and professionally cataloged. All right, so we got the uh, back of the drive shaft bolts out. These weren't too bad. These are 17 millimeter. I just put a big wrench on here, and I have a big hammer, and I just kind of tapped it a little bit. and. They all broke loose. Now I do have a pail at the opposite end here underneath the transfer case when we pull this out in case there's any leakage. So, all right, so, all right, so grab all these. I tell you. Nissan didn't mess around when they were putting bolts in this thing. And yes, I did mark the end of the drive shaft. You can see a mark there. And a mark right there. Actually, this is fingernail polish. Works pretty good. All right, so we'll go ahead and slip our drive shaft out. Out it comes, and uh, nope, no fluid. So that's good to know. And here's a quick look at the bolts on the rear drive shaft. Big bolts. Set in the bag been labeled tagged next on the bottom of the transmission here we have a cross member go ahead and take out these two bolts here these are 14 millimeter all right so there is our last one take a small jack and a piece of wood and go ahead and lift the back of the transfer case up and as you can see here it is resting on the bottom of the transfer case this piece of wood that i got 
And as you're lifting it up, slightly tap on your transmission mounts. And this will help them slide up out, almost out of the lower bracket. Take a 17 millimeter socket, and there's a hole in the bottom of the frame. Go ahead and take this bolt out. All right, so there's that one, and you can see it's got a funny looking head on it. It's kind of square, and we'll get the other one. All right, and out it comes. And out it comes. Now you notice, when I tuck this off, this motor mount now will move around. You can actually just slide it out. And now go ahead and jack your jack and lift it up a little bit more. And now we can take our motor mount out for now. Or if you can't get it out at the moment, that's okay. Leave it in. Sometimes they come out, sometimes they don't. Once we go ahead and loosen up the bolts on this frame on the end, we can take this hole down as one piece. But I have gotten these out here before. We'll just go ahead and take the bracket off with it at the same time. And take out the two bolts. There are two on each side. Two here and two on the other side over there. And these are both 17 millimeter. And out comes our last bolt. And you can see the bracket falling down, or the uh, cross member, I should say. And I got my hand on top. There's a wrench up there holding that, so it actually may stay on all the way for me. All right, and there we go. So that cross member is now out. And now go ahead and put a small support underneath the transmission with a block of wood. You can use a jack stand and go ahead and lower the jack to about one to two inches. And once you've done that, make sure everything is secure and the jack is pretty solid. And then go ahead and take out the jack stand. Now before we go dropping this transfer case out and taking the bolts out, I did go ahead and disconnect my exhaust from this side and on that side. And if you can't get your bolts off, you can just grind them off. And I basically just kind of pushed all this exhaust back out of the way so the back end of the transfer case would not be hitting this pipe. And as you can see, the exhaust pipe is just kind of hanging loose. Gives you just a little more room under there to work in. And now, here comes our last bolt on our transfer case. The bottom wasn't too bad. The top three bolts were kind of a bear. Actually, there's four. Two of them on the side you can kind of get. I'll show you those in a minute. The two, the three on the top, you have to kind of be uh, ingenious to get them, but they will come out. And there's the last one. And we got our connector rod here for our 4x4 shifter. It's unhooked. All right, in order to get this far, I really had to lower this transfer case down about four to five inches and you can see I still got the transmission supported by a block of wood and my jack stand and one thing you kind of got to watch is when you're tipping this engine back make sure your fan doesn't hit the shroud mine is okay it actually hit it and it popped on the outside so I'm good there I was kind of watching that but the engine you can see it's kind of leaning back so this is one of the things that will happen when you tip that transfer case and transmission back now the reason we had to do that is we had to bring this down far enough to get our hands up in there to get a socket and a ratchet up there to take out three bolts. The one on the side over here is really tight. If you use a ratchet uh, wrench on it, especially on this side right about here where my finger is, if I turn the camera a little bit, you can kind of see it. I used one of these. When you get it on the bolt, there's just barely enough room to turn that. Something like this. Maybe one click. But once it gets going, you can actually get them out, twist them out with your fingers. Now, do the top bolts first because if you leave the bottom bolts in on this transfer case, it will keep it nice and sturdy. And when you break these bolts on the top loose, most of the time they will just come out. But if you loosen the bottom ones first and you try to do the top, then the thing could get into a bind and those top bolts won't come out as easy. Then, of course, you have the top bolt and the bolt on the left. We'll talk about that when we pull this transfer case out to give you a really good look. And quickly, having said all that, there are a couple plugs here. There's a wiring harness. Uh, unplug this one here. It just kind of unhooks. Uh, it goes up to the front up here, to this one. Pushes back in here, and you got a plug here you got to unplug. 
and you got this wiring harness here, you unplug. These are a little fickle to get apart, but they will come apart. Once you get all these here, I think there's a vacuum line on top we'll have to worry about. But other than that, we're ready to put the transmission jack under here and go ahead and separate this. Now, I still have oil in the transfer case. Barely any dripped out of the back of the housing. The back of the transmission is sealed. It does have a seal in the rear drive shaft that goes into this uh, transfer case. So I'm not worried about leakage or anything like that. And of course, to make your life a lot easier when you put all this back together, label everything. You see I have all my transfer case bolts labeled. All right, guys, before we go ahead and drop this uh, transfer case, I will put the camera up here. I'm going to give you a nice look what the top of this looks like. I think you can kind of get the idea of what you're going to go through here with your hands. And you can see there's a couple bolt holes there. Probably not the best lighting, but like I said, we'll, I'll show you more of this when we get the transfer case out. So uh, let's go ahead and get this out. Like I said, I'm ready to drop this transfer case, but I almost forgot to tell you, there is one hidden bolt right behind this gear shift lever here. You have to take this bracket off in order to get to it. You can only get this bolt out so far because it'll hit this boot and so forth here. So we have to take this piece off. And once we get this out of the way, like this, move this out of the way like that. There's our offending bolt, man. I was like, what's catching it? And I almost completely forgot about this bolt. So we gotta get that out of the way. Once we get this out of the way, we are gonna be ready to drop this transfer case. All right, oh, all right, so go ahead and this last one out. All right, there it is. Now, so this is our last bolt, and you can see I got a gap here in the transfer case. It's ready to come out. And so there it is, there's our last bolt. Hey, let me know where you're watching from right now, and thanks for sticking in the video so far. All right, so let's go ahead and separate this. Now, what I've got here is just a little chisel. Uh, it's a pointy thing. There's a little gap right here. If you take a hammer and just kind of hit this a couple times. If you have all your bolts out, this will separate, and you can see it separating. And you can see this big crack that I got. So we're ready to go ahead and put the jack under here and slide this out. All right, so let's go ahead and get this out. We'll put a little pressure on the bottom of the jack just to kind of help it there a little bit. And you can see it's already coming apart, which is great. And just take your pry bar, slide it off, and out she comes. And there's our transfer case out. How about that? All right, so there's a look at it kind of sitting on the jack stand still. I kind of spun it around. There is a hose up on the top that we have to take off. Once we take that off, we can pull this out of here. Now, I will have to tip my jack sideways a little bit and slide this off of here because my jack does typically sit about five inches high, so it's a little tight, so we'll slide this out and look at it. And just before we pull this transfer case out, you can see I tipped this back a little bit, and I got about a half a quarter or so out of there. So just in case uh, you're going to be pulling your transfer case, you might want to go ahead and drain the fluid out. If not, you might want to put something in here and catch some of this just in case. All right, so as we look at it here, we have 14 bolts. Uh, the th ones on the bottom here, which start right here and go all the way down and end over here, uh, they're easy to get. You can just uh, kind of lay under there and get them. But the ones on the top, you actually get them from behind, and that's when it gets kind of difficult. And as you can see here, uh, you got these little pieces here, these support pieces that they make from the factory. When you get your wrench on here, you can only turn it so far. It actually hits this so these two here you can almost give us a swivel socket i actually just got a wrench under there once i get this down pretty far these here are pretty tight so you have to get a little ratchet wrenching in there and when you grip it just turn it just a little bit but the lower you can get this down the more room it does give you so beware these top bolts are kind of a pain to get but once you get that out you're home free and real quick here are the sensors this one goes to the front there's a plug over here, and there's a wire that comes up and goes into here. This one was the one that was kind of tough to get loose. Kind of a weird plug. you got to put a screwdriver in there, and you got to push on a tab, and it pops off. So looks like we're uh, pretty much done with the transfer case. So hopefully this will help you out if you just need to get the transfer case out going this far into the video. All right, guys. So after going through all of that, there's the back of the transmission. If I pan over here, 
you can see all the clearance we have on this side of the transmission and I can see all the bolts all the way up to the top of the bell housing and here's my exhaust so we're good over here but when we go to the other side we kind of get into a little issue I went on ahead and took out the exhaust basically the catalytic converter on this side it's not very long but there are three bolts at the top here that you have to get loose now mine have been off before I have a video on here on how to replace these catalytic converters on this Xterra so you might want to search for that and you get some idea how to replace these but if yours have never been off you can usually take an extension and get onto these nuts and just break them off a lot of times if you put penetrating oil on them they will actually come off and the whole unit will come off as one and just make sure you disconnect your wire when you slide this out real easy to get to so as we come on the passenger side this is where the catalytic converter sit and you can see between here and here there was no room now with the catalytic converter out I can easily get into this plate unhook this linkage here to the side of the transmission and some wires and if you look closely we have access into our starter bolts and up to the top here we can actually get an extension up here and get the other two bolts out on the top of the transmission and of course there is the back of the exhaust of the uh, front catalytic converter and um, you can get an extension and a, a swivel in here you can actually get this out and get this piece out so it's almost uh, what you want to do if you can get this out it will make your work a lot easier and also right here if I pan up we do have a bolt here that we have to take out of this transmission line so you will almost have to take this out in order to get in here and actually have some room so it'll make your uh, job a little easier to take this line off and the line on the other side so uh, you might want to think about this eventually that you will have to take this side of the catalytic converter off to make the job just a little bit easier and also you notice there is a heat shield here that is missing well I took that out because the edge of it is really sharp I know it wasn't really it wasn't really in the way but there was always a chance I could actually snag my hand on it or something so I just pulled it out of the way uh, 10 millimeter bolts it's in the back we may not even put that on but we'll deal with that later but look at all the room that we have in here now to work on the side of this transmission and then to unhook things all right, so I gave in. I decided to go ahead and drain the transmission fluid. Real easy to do. At least Nissan put a plug on the bottom of the transmission to get this out. Just about done dripping, and that was a three-quarter inch plug. And there is a look at the plug. All right, so we got the starter bolts out. Uh, pretty easy to do. They use a 14 millimeter. There's a little bolt here. It goes on the bracket that holds the line near that starter. That is a 10 millimeter, by the way. And right there is where that little bolt goes. There's a little clamp there that holds that uh, transmission line up. I just kind of got that out of the way because we will have to move those transmission lines around. And you can see the starter bolts are now missing. All right, right there is where the starter used to sit. And right here is the tip of it. I don't know if you can see it, but I kind of like pushed it out of the way. It's just enough room to get a tool in there to start. Almost start to get those torque and rotor bolts, but we can't quite get them yet. All right, guys, surprisingly, I got all the bottom bolts out on this side bell housing, and uh, I'll quickly explain what I did. Right up there is our first bolt. I think you can kind of see that right there. There's an empty hole. I put a ratcheting ratch up in there, wrench, ratcheting wrench, that's what I'm trying to say, up in there. And I kind of snaked it down. I put a secondary wrench on it and broke it loose. And after about two turns, I just took it off my finger. So that one came out pretty fairly uh, easy. And then there's the second one, which is right here where my finger is. I put my ratcheting wrench up in there and got it loose. Not a lot of room here to move the wrench, but when you move it, you'll hear it click a little bit. Then after a couple turns, I got it out. Then there's one more right beside it that I haven't really taken out yet. I've left it in. It's actually right right here where my finger is the starter sits right up above it you can actually get an extension and go in here and take it out and put your hand around here and just kind of twist it up but i left that one in there for uh, now but the one the, on the other side that i took out i used an extension on and the other one that i took out it's right there uh right in front of that light i don't think you can see it but if i turn it just enough let me get my hand up in here it's right about here i put an extension on that from the front here right up here in front of the differential and kind of snaked it up here above this differential and I actually got that one out so actually like I said like I turned it a couple times I just stuck my fingers up there and, and turned it loose it came right out I'm gonna go ahead and take this bolt here out I'll put an extension here it's actually bolts into the back of the transmission from the on top of this little oil sump I'll just put an extension here and we'll get this out of the way I think these transmission lines might be in the way I may have to actually kind of move them out of the way for now but 
that one there should be pretty easy to get out. All right, so uh, looking at this last bolt that we just talked about briefly, we had to unhook a couple of these uh, brackets, these transmission lines that go down and kind of bolt around to the front of the uh, transmission pan with 10 millimeter little bolts and screws into the side and there's a little bolt over there. And as you can see right here on the passenger side, it's uh, kind of screwed in like this with a fitting. Same thing on the driver's side. You can see it's all unhooked. This lets me kind of flex this line around a little bit. So I can actually get in here with a socket. There's my extension. And here's a bracket there that kind of bolts onto that transmission line. So all of our bolts on the bottom of the bale housing are out. The rest of them are on the back on the top we'll get to those here in a little bit but basically i just used an extension to get in here and lifted this line up out of the way enough to get in here to get this and this is a 14 millimeter and i basically used an extension like this to get in there to fish all this out so we'll go ahead and put all this in a bag where it's tagged so we can find it later oh guys and one other thing i did go ahead and loosen this up a little bit because with this engine kind of tipping back it's not quite long enough so i kind of loosened this up and it did kind of pop off there but everything else here seems to be okay. The engine has actually gone down in the back of the transmission another three to four inches. So this thing's swiveled way back. So I should have plenty of room to get on those top transmission bolts when we uh, get ready to do that. But just kind of check things, you know, and make sure you're okay, especially next to the firewall. Don't go crazy with it. Just slowly do it and tip it back. This is just sort of an observation. The line that I unhooked on the side of the transmission over with the bolt there was quite a bit of fluid that slowly just kept dripping and dripping. So I left this overnight and you can see I got about a quart and I believe a lot of that comes from the radiator. So just be aware if you're leaking when you unhook that line and you throw it off the side, it's going to continue to leak for a while. So you might want to be prepared to catch some of that. It's going to take a while to drip out. So here's where we're at. We got all the bolts out of the uh, bell housing. I left this one on. I just unscrewed it. Uh, a quarter of an inch or so and there's one on the other side i did the same thing these i got in here and got them with a long extension i'll show you this in a second and a 14 millimeter this is not a 3 8 drive this is a half inch drive don't even think about using a uh, 3 8 drive because i'll show you why here is what i'm using this guy here this thing here broke that loose if you're going to use a 3 8 you're going to have a problem the half inch is much better because once you put all this together and you're uh, kind of twisting this, turning it. With this long extension here, it won't flex. It's not gonna flex. The problem comes with, you have a bunch of these guys here, three eighths together. After a while, you get four or five of these together, they start to flex, and when you start to break that bolt loose, there's a tendency for this to twist a little bit, and when that bolt does break loose, or if it does break loose, this is gonna fly everywhere and come apart. I find it so much easier to use something like this, and I typically do this on transmission, so use something heavy, don't use something like this, something really uh, weak uh, for those bolts. Use something like this, a good half inch ratchet and extension and a 14 millimeter socket and you'll get those transmission bolts out as long as you have the back end of it tipped down and you can get, kind of get your hand up in there, start the socket on the bolt. And I did not even use a swivel, so this is not even a swivel socket, so it does move just a little bit, but that's how I get those bolts off. And this here goes on this side of the driver's side. There is a sensor on the side of that transmission. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. This is the plate that goes over it. I believe it's a crank sensor. Uh, be aware, either unhook it or take it off. I just took mine off because they didn't want to take a chance of breaking it. It's probably a 25 or $30 part. If you can keep it, take a few minutes, it'll save you. Let me show you where that's at. And right there is the sensor. If I get over here a little closer and put my hand up here. There it is, and it bolts to the side of the transmission right here. There's a little bolt that goes in there, and once you get this transmission tipped back, you can get a small ratchet burn and just kind of take this off and push it off to the side. And also, just for giggles, and just because when I go to pull this transmission out, I did unhook this oxygen sensor and push it off to the side because it does stick out just a little bit ways there. Then we'll take a chance of breaking that. And back on the passenger side, I've unhooked this linkage here. I've got to take this off here real quick. I'm going to put some oil on, pop this clip off, pull this out of the way. This is your shift selector. I got most of my hoses and wires uh, up here off. There is one wire going down here to the shift selector switch. I got to unhook it. 
dipstick is out you got to unscrew a 10 millimeter bolt on the bottom here and there's one up on the top and also there's a wiring harness up there that has a plastic tab in it pull that plastic tab out and that'll allow that uh dipstick to pull out let's go up here and look at that real quick and here is the dipstick there's a little bolt right here 10 millimeter that bolts right here where my finger is i think you can see that and this wiring harness that kind of snakes into the side of it just a tab it's right here this little piece right here where my thumb is see that that goes inside this just pull this up out of the way and you're okay and, and most importantly do this put something right here where the dipstick hole is uh, a cloth anything just so no dirt falls down in there you see that bolt right there kind of in the side of the bell housing that's the other bolt I left on this side because I couldn't uh, put it any lower because the other two bolts below there are just the starter bolts uh -huh. boy getting this thing out was fun that little clip boy Alright, so I think we just slide this out and we'll put this off to the back. Of course, it'll probably be a pain to get off too. Well, no. Alright, so put the selector cable out of the way. Okay, so on the back of this transmission here, there is a speed sensor. There's a 10 millimeter bolt. Took me a while to get this thing out, but it's very long. There it is. Make sure you get this out and put it off the side. Alright, so we'll pull this out of here. And there it is. So we're just about down to the nitty gritty here. And boy, I tell you, I just, some of these brackets, they hide sensors. So I had a choice have to take this bracket off here. There's this one sensor right here that I've got to disconnect. And I wasn't sure how it comes off. So it looks like there's a clip right here. Kind of a weird thing. There's no break here where you can just pull it apart. It's one continuous, uh, wire going up to the ECMU so you have to take your time and kind of look at this stuff but we're just about ready to go ahead and get the torque converter bolts out but I want to make sure we have all the wires here disconnected so we'll get this off all right guys so you know I was freaking out I was trying to figure out how to get this plug off the side of the transmission I still have a wire here to get and of course I took the wire off on the top for the speed sensor so you know i pulled this tab off here this will come out so far but there's still wires going inside the transmission so i just pushed it back in there's a seal here so i got to thinking well where do these wires go well it turns out all these wires just go up to a wiring harness up to the top of the engine on the side of the engine bay and if you just unhook these up here they all connect right here there's four plugs just unhook them right here and slide that entire wiring harness all the way down and this right here my friend is going to make your day because all these wires go straight to the transmission to all of the sensors this is why i like to show all my work i don't leave out anything because even i sometimes overlook things so aren't you glad you stayed in the video this long so just unhook all those harnesses up there, pull them back, and it, all those wires go to this transmission. You don't even have to unhook any of these sensors. So, lesson learned there. Now, this is a great time to go ahead and get you a piece of wood, a little block of wood, and kind of put it between the front of the oil pan and the top of the uh, steering link here. Or, you know, you can make up anything you want here. The whole idea is we're going to keep this engine from rocking back forward when we disconnect that transmission. And uh, just as long as you get something up here under the oil pan, uh, it should not be a problem. And also, you can see my transmission lines are okay. It's away from the transmission lines. But you can do just about anything you want. The whole idea is we want to keep the motor pretty much where it is in the position that it's in now. All right, everyone. Having said that, there is our starter. It's kind of pushed back out of the way. Now, the secret in order to get these torque converter bolts off that nobody on YouTube shows you is this. You have this bracket that kind of sits in here like this. The starter goes here, goes into this hole, and you have a secondary plate that we're going to pull out in a minute that goes on the front of this. You have to pull this off. In order to get this off, you have to get a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench like this. And what I did, basically, I kind of got up in there. It was kind of like this. I put this on like this. I took a secondary wrench, got in here like this, gave it some leverage, and once I got these going, they came off. This is the only way I can get these off. I can tell you, this thing is going to test your patience, so you're going to have to take your time getting this off. Once you get this off, then 
all we have to do is go ahead and slide that one plate out. Let's go look at that real quick. That plate is right here. Now, I've got my two bell housing bolts kind of backed off just a little bit. And look, this transmission is ready to come off. See that? I can move the whole thing. Now, here is the plate. I've got to pull off. It takes a second to move it around and grab it. Let's see if I can get a screwdriver on it here. This side. So after about 20 minutes of messing around here, uh, I actually tucked the other two bolts out of this transmission line that bolts on the side of the uh, motor, uh, 10 millimeter bolts, free this up and there it came out. You're going to wiggle this and fight and wiggle and uh, move this transmission around. This will eventually come out. So there's a nice look at it. Let's take it out in the light. So here is a look at the pan or the dust cover, I should say. I'm not sure which one of these get, is getting hung up, but I think it was just caught up on the transmission line because those two transmission lines go like this. You're trying to pull this out and it's getting caught on this side, on the side of the uh, engine block. So uh, you have to wrestle around with this and eventually get it out of the way. Okay, so now I've got my transmission jack up under the uh, transmission to kind of secure it a little bit to get some of the weight off of it. And, and before I did that, I went ahead and just pulled these transmission lines out. Look at the, the kinks. So they kind of get caught right here on the edge of the transmission in the bell housing. So uh, you can pull these out before you set that transmission jack up under there. It's just going to make working getting this transmission out a lot easier. So this was a little bit of a pain, but it's doable. All right, guys, do you see what I can see? Yeah, there's our torque converter bolt. So we're just going to put an extension back to there and take them off one by one. I'm going to mark one of them with paint so when we put it back together eventually we'll know uh, the way it goes. But I think you can see that fairly well. Let me just pan back now or zoom back. And you can see I'm at the front of the engine here on the passenger side. This is how we're going to take all four of them out. And probably the most important thing, I am using a 1 and 1 16th inch socket. I am putting it on the front of the crank pulley with my right hand and kind of turning that engine a little bit and this is how I'm going to spin the engine around and you can see right here all I have to do is put this like this and uh, put it on there and uh, turn the engine so it's uh, pretty accessible there let's go ahead and get all these out kind of bittersweet after about four days three to four hours here and there looks like this transmission is finally coming out and it's actually leaking just sitting here crazy so here's one and boy they're not very big boats and let me tell you what it was didn't take nothing to get this loose it just came right loose so we can get the other three out and we're almost ready to drop this baby all right check it out all four torque converter bolts now i read online somewhere that you can't reuse these but i'll do some research but it looks like to me they're just fine when i put these back in the threads look fine i'll check the torque converter but uh if i put these back in i'll put some thread locker on it but uh, these look perfectly okay and now we're going to go ahead and drop this out. I'll put this on time lapse and it's going to be kind of hard to get a lot of these angles, but you'll get the idea. I want to take my pry bar, pry it apart and slowly push it back and let the jack come down. All right, guys, just like that, came right out. There's the flywheel, and there it's kind of sitting on my jack. Now, one thing I didn't mention about this jack was I forgot to say in the earlier video, my jack actually sits about five or six inches already off the ground, so I have to kind of figure this in so you can see the jack's all the way down. What I'll do is kind of tilt this jack back a little bit and slide the transmission off. 
and uh, get it out of there. I could lift the front up some more. I could just lift the front end up a little bit. And it would probably clear the bottom of this frame, but I want to go ahead and get this out of here. All right, you might as well just watch me slide it off the jack. This is what's nice about this jack. I got this handle to turn, and I can do about anything with it. And there it is. Oh, and I did go ahead and take some white paint. I sprayed before I pulled this apart so I know where this bolt is, and uh, some of the paint got on the flywheel. Because some vehicles, you know, these could be just off a little bit, so I know exactly where that should line up. But you can see where I put paint on the flywheel. Actually, it looks like a mess there. Not a paint can kind of exploded, but hey, there's a lot of paint there, but that's that. All right, guys, like I said, kind of bittersweet. I got it out finally after, I don't know, four or five days here and there. A lot of oil pulling on the bottom here, running down around that seal. Uh, I'm gonna pull this torque converter off. I don't think it's leaking. I don't think it's leaking because I never really had any problems with adding transmission fluid, but let's go ahead and pull this off and just look. Oh no, it's bone dry. Around here, there's absolutely no transmission fluids all this is oil all right guys now i wanted to show you this here this is pretty important probably the most important part of the video you have this plate dust cover that sits on the bottom and then you have this piece here that kind of bolts like this the problem you get into is you pull this out but this piece here still is in the way because your torque converter bolt sits off the side you actually have to pull this piece here off where the starter sits then you can get into this bolt, which sits off the side like this. But once you get this out of here and this, then you have a lot of clearance. So it's a little bit of a pain getting this out, but this here is really the key. And also getting these torque converter bolts out. So you may have to spend just a little bit of time on that, just so you know, so we can kind of clear up a couple very important things here. And the other thing I was worried about when you pull this transmission out, I was afraid it was going to hit part of this front diff. But they do have a place made in that transmission where it's kind of slanted. It just clears this, so no need to take out your differential. So I'm really happy about that. It actually, uh, once I got all the bolts out of it, it came apart really easy. All right, just out of curiosity, I was wondering about this plate. I wanted to see if there was any dial pins that actually catches it. Uh, no. So when you go to pull this out, you just got to wrestle around with it and get those transmission lines out of the way. Now there's some dial pins up here, up high, right here, and up there. But it doesn't come close to the piece I just showed you. It goes like this. So that's that. So all I'm going to do now is go ahead and pull this flywheel off here. I can see oil coming behind here. Now before we go under the engine and look at the back of that flywheel and see where all that oil is coming from, you can see my engine is still tipped back a little bit. It is in the perfect position, especially the angle when I go to put this transmission back together. And here is the back of the engine. Now I pulled the uh, flywheel and took all the bolts off. I did take a paint marker and please, you got to do the same thing because it keeps everything exactly where it was. See, I got paint on my bolts there, on this piece, and on that. Just so you know, and on the flywheel. Now here is look at the plate that goes right about here, and it's held on by a couple dowel pins. So we got the uh, flywheel, which is actually pretty light, and I don't know. I think this might have been off before. I'm not sure if this is a factory mark or not. My mark is actually right here on this side and on this side we got this and a mark here so i think someone may have been in here working on this before and as you get a little closer look here's our leak you can see it leaking at the bottom of this housing that goes on this oil pan and uh, the seal itself is not leaking which is kind of strange i thought it would be leaking a lot more but it's uh, leaking here hitting the flywheel slinging the oil around and getting on the starter and dripping out and if you look real close you can see that oil just kind of seeping around us so someone's been in here working before because you can see this part of this um, rtv stuff is actually gotten pushed out i don't know if this is factory or not then over here you got it looks like a hack job so we're going to pull this piece off in another video and we'll put all this back together 
uh, and uh, it should take care of our issue. Now I was worried down here on the bottom, especially right here, we had a lot of rust and stuff, so I scraped this off last night, and uh, I thought maybe we had a leak here, but no, it's okay. If you look here, you can see it kind of running down. And up here on the bottom of this gasket on the oil pan on this side and on this side, where it bolts the block, it's bone dry, no oil whatsoever, so it's all right here. So thankfully this will be easy to take off and replace. So we'll take all this off and we'll put another seal. We'll redo this with a gasket maker and all that. And there's actually a little paper seal, I believe, that goes behind here. And we'll put a new uh, transmission seal in the uh, transmission out there. That way we won't have any more leaks. So we'll do all that in another video later. We'll just kind of go over it briefly and uh, put it all back together and let you know, give you an update how the uh, Xterra worked out one other thing you want to do is inspect your flywheel plate make sure there are no cracks especially around here i've seen a lot of cracks in the past in vehicles where you get a crack in here and you kind of miss it and it just continues and you end up with a rattle and noise and you can see on this side we're good looks like pretty good here and on this side here this is where the paint is from my torque converter so i know kind of where it's at kind of a mess there but the flywheel is in really good shape i don't see anything wrong with it so we're good there all right guys so there is a look at the transmission as we wrap this video up if you like this video give it a thumbs up and say hello and until my next video guys i will see you later